Hello guys, good afternoon. This is Professor Henderson. Thank you so much for tuning in to my channel. Thank you to my subscribers that has been subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today's video, it's about a BLS uh, test question. So I decided to um, provide you with a few slides on um, questions that you can find on the um, um, the basic life support for healthcare providers exam. So let's dive into the video. Um, if you like these types of video, continue to like, continue to share, and continue to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. So the first question we have here is that which victim requires CPR? So Answer A, a victim who is unresponsive with no breathing and pulse. A victim who is unresponsive but is breathing adequately. A victim with a pulse who having difficulties breathing. A victim with chest pain and indigestion. So the correct answer will be A as in alpha, a victim who is unresponsive with no breathing and pulse. Obviously, this patient is in a um, cardiac arrest and they will require uh, CPR. A as in alpha is the correct answer for question one. Let's look at the second question. When is it appropriate to move an adult victim who needs CPR? A, when help is more than 15 minutes away from the scene. B, when an adult victim is in a dangerous environment. C, to locate a AED when one is not available. D, as soon as the adult is found to be in arrest. So the correct answer for this question is when help is more than 15 minutes away from the scene, A as in alpha is the correct answer for question two. Question three. High quality CPR includes starting chest compressions within how many seconds after recognition of cardiac arrest? So, um, a, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. So according to the American Heart Association, um, evidence-based research shows that it is um, imperative that you start CPR within 10 seconds after someone is in cardiac arrest. So you don't want to wait too long because if you wait 15, 20, or 30 seconds, um, it's depriving the, um, the, the cells from oxygen. So you want to start compressions as early as possible to enhance um, blood flow to the brain. So A is the correct answer for that question. Question four, interruption in chest compressions should be limited to how many seconds? So it should be about um, less than 25 seconds interruptions of um, chest compressions because as you're doing 30 compressions and two breaths, you are in enhancing blood flow to the um to the heart so therefore you're reducing um, the patients from um, having um, their brain cell to die so it's important that you continue those compressions that's question four question five how can you tell when a rescue brick for a for an infant victim is effective the ventilation bag is completely compressed. I can hear air leaking around the mask. There is a visible rise of the chest. There is a visible rise of the chest. So the correct answer will be 
D, there is a visible rise of the chest. So as you're doing the um, compressions and you're giving breaths, as you give the two breaths, and if you see rise and fall of the diaphragm, that's how you know that your breaths are effective. If you don't see rise and fall of the chest, that means that maybe there's an air leak and maybe you will have to reposition the mask to give the breaths. So these are the correct answers for that question. Question six. What is the best method of opening the airway on an unresponsive patient when you do not suspect cervical injuries? A, give abdominal thrust and then sweep out the mouth. B, use the head tilt chin lift technique. C, use a mask while giving breaths to the victim. D, use a tongue lift finger sweep. So the correct answer here is that if you do not suspect cervical injuries, you can give the um you can use the head tilt chin lift method which is b is the correct answer so if you suspect cervical injuries like an automobile accident or a victim fell from a tree or from a ladder you may anticipate they might have cervical injuries and you don't want to move them and you don't want to like tilt their head backwards then you can cause further injuries so if you do not suspect that the correct answer will be use the head tilt chin lift technique to open the airway question number eight which technique is not recommended for a single rescuer to provide breaths during cpr a bag mask device b mouth to barrier device c mouth to mask technique d mouth to mouth technique so the correct answer for this question will be the bag mask device so in order to use the bag mask device which is called the ambu bag you need to have two rescuer on the scene one rescuer will be positioning doing 30 compressions of CPR while the other rescuer will be positioned at the head of the patient to use the bag mask device, the ambu bag, to give the two breaths. So A is the correct answer for a single rescuer. Guys, if you need more um, information about CPR, you can log on to my um, website, the Heart CPR Training. My contact information is here to call if you need to book a class such as a BLS, an ACLS, or a PALS class. You can call me to schedule a course. Um, my prices are very, very um, reasonable. It's not expensive. And when you complete the course, I will provide you with an American Heart Association CPR certification card the same day. After you look at the video for three hours, I do the, um, the demonstrations with you and then you will have to do the return demonstrations and I can print your card. So please contact me if you need a CPR course. All right, so we have another question. Hey, so this question has to do with what is likely to cause air to enter the victim's stomach during the bag mass ventilation? A, the rescue, the rescuer done do not the rescue done not make a good seal the rescue did not make a good seal did not make a good seal between the face and the mass the volume of breaths given is sufficient to see the chest rise breaths are giving too quickly or with too much force each breath is given over one second 
So um, air entering the patient's stomach, that's called hyper hyperinflation or hyperventilation. So if you're giving the breaths too quickly, you can force uh, air into the patient's ab abdominal cavity. So you don't want to give the um, the breaths too quickly. You want to do like it normal, how you will take a normal breath. So, so to prevent air from entering the patient's stomach, you want to do it very gently, not too fast. Again, I have my contact information here. If you need to take the CPR course from me, please contact me and you can schedule a course. Um, thank you so much for looking at this short video. I really want to extend my greatest gratitude for my subscribers that have been subscribing to this YouTube channel. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe, and contact me if you um, located within the area of Richmond Hill, Queens where my training center is located for your CPR needs. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Um, please share this video, leave your comments below what you would like me to provide you next with. Thank you so much. Have a good day.